Hey, my name's Rob. I love food, I support Southampton, and I'm passionate about seeing young people reach their full potential. Which is why today I'm going to be talking about seven traits to help you in leadership. The way we will do this is we will look at seven people from the Bible and a trait that each of them needed so that they could start their journey on leadership. So trait number one, discover your calling person, Moses. Exodus 3, 4 says, When the Lord saw that Moses was coming closer, he called to him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He answered, Yes, here I am. Moses was called by God. We can see how God chose Moses and called him to let his people go. It wasn't an easy calling and it was still difficult for Moses to say yes, but Moses accepted and did what God called him to. God prepared Moses for his calling. God equipped Moses for his calling. And God gave Moses a heart for his calling. Who do you feel called to? What do you feel called to? When do you feel called and where do you feel called? What passions have you got in your heart? And what are you good at? Discovering your calling can take a while, but asking these questions can massively help. So go on a journey, start to discover your calling. Ask yourself these questions. Who, what, when, where. Calling is really important. Trait number two, be courageous. Person, Joshua. Joshua 1, 9 says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God commands Joshua to be courageous. Joshua has taken over from Moses. He stepped into leadership and God reminds Joshua here to be courageous. And Joshua is leading the people into the promised land. The old things had stopped the people entering the promised land. So this really is brand new territory, an opportunity to be brave, an opportunity to triumph over the past. So Joshua needs courage, and so do we when it comes to stepping into leadership. Courage to step forward and courage to speak out. Courage to go into new territory and new places. Courage to face things that may be scary and courage to do something that others couldn't. Nelson Mandela said this about courage. I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. So be courageous, have courage. Trait number three, get the timing right. Person, Esther. Esther 4, 14 says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther had found herself in a position where she had an opportunity to speak out and make a change. She was to be the voice which could protect her people. But for Esther, the most significant thing was timing. She had been put in the right place at the right time. If she had got the timing wrong, then she may not have reached her full potential and influence. But Esther got it spot on. She didn't do it too soon. She didn't chase or rush it and, and she didn't force things. She was reliant on God and his timing, which led to her making an actual impact on history's timeline. Getting the timing right is important and we don't need to rush things or put pressure on ourselves to be the very best at something. So trust God's timing. Your time will come. But don't force it, don't rush it, don't go for it too early. Because just like Esther, we need to be aiming for the right place at the right time. They say, if you get to the bus stop late, you'll miss it. They say, if you get to the bus stop too early while it's raining, you won't enjoy it. But if you get your timing right, that will be where your most rewarding experience will be. So get the timing right. Trait number four, be relational. Person, David. Psalm 9, 1-2 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. 
I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. David is known for being the one who killed the giant, who actually becomes king and also did that thing with Bathsheba. But throughout the Bible, we can see David's character is really revealed and in particular through the Psalms. He is relatable. He shows and reveals his emotions. He is honest. He explains and understands feelings and he relates to his people and to us. David is relational. He reveals his relationship with God through what he says and does. As well as reveals his understanding, shows his compassion, he is sometimes stern, sometimes sad, and sometimes full of joy. David can relate to people and we need to be able to do the same. Whether someone is old, whether someone is young, whether someone is happy, whether someone is sad, someone we agree with or disagree with, God has made us to be in relationship with others. So go on the journey and expand your circle of relationships. Get to know people, listen to their experiences, learn from their mistakes, be their shoulder to cry on, be the life of the party, just be relational, have a heart for connecting with people. There's a famous saying and it goes like this, no road is long with good company. Be relational. Trait number five, become equipped person, Peter. Matthew 16, 18 to 19 says, and I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Peter is chosen by Jesus to be one of his disciples. And for years and years, Peter sees, he watches, he experiences, he learns and is taught by Jesus. And Jesus gives Peter a great opportunity and responsibility to build his church. But Jesus has equipped Peter to do so. He has given Peter training, experiences and also said, have a go. Jesus has also put people into place to support Peter and has also equipped Peter by the helping hands and the cheering on and, and through the friendship of others. God equips us through friendships, through the Holy Spirit, through the church, through our gifts and talents and opportunities. But the equipment that took place took a while for Peter. How have you been equipped? What gifts and talents have you been given? How does the Holy Spirit guide you? Who has God put around you? What good things are going into you? What key has God given you? If you're a seed, what equipping do you need in order for you to grow and become a mighty tree? Equipping is really important and it did take Peter time and lots of lessons, but equipping yourself is so important. So that actually when the time is right, you're prepared, you're trained and you're ready to go. Become equipped. Trait number six, have a servant heart. Person, Mary. Luke 1 38 says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary was chosen by God to be the mother of Jesus. God could have called anyone, someone famous, someone rich, someone popular, someone who at the time was the most successful, but he chooses Mary, a young, poor and ordinary woman. However, Mary has the most incredible and scary opportunity to raise and be responsible for God in human flesh, to be the mother of Jesus. And Mary, with all the odds against her, says yes to this responsibility and this scary opportunity and says yes to God. And she becomes the mother of Jesus. But something that Mary had that's really important is that she has a servant heart, a heart that is willing to follow God, a heart that isn't looking for fame or recognition. And it's actually the positioning and willingness of her servant heart that makes her the only person in all of time to be the mother of Jesus. Where's your heart at? Are you willing to do a servant's job? Do you put God's plan above your own? 
being a servant in the background prepares the way for the king at the front. Mother Teresa puts it like this, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Have a servant heart. Trait number seven, trust God. Person, Ananias. Acts 9, 17 says, So Ananias went to the house, and when he arrived, he placed his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled by the Holy Spirit. Saul hates Christians, and people know all about what Saul does and has done to Christians. Saul has an encounter with Jesus and from hating Christians becomes one. It's an amazing, amazing moment. But there is a significant risk that Ananias has to take in order for Paul to move and have this experience of God. Ananias is a Christian and God asks him and sends him to go and help Paul. But Ananias would have known all about Saul. He would have known the troubles and the danger and all about Saul's character and his hate for Christians. But Ananias trusts God. And despite the risk, despite the fear, despite the worry, despite the consequences, he follows God's call. Ananias, above all his feelings and emotions, trusts God and he steps out. And this allows Ananias the opportunity to play a part in the evangelization of the world. Trust God despite what is happening. God wants what's best for you. He is on your side. Sometimes life is tough, sometimes life is confusing, and sometimes life is really difficult. But God is there with you. People, the world, things around you will let you down. But God won't. Put your trust in him. Whatever happens, wherever you are at, trust God. We are all called to be leaders in some way. Some of us in a large capacity, some of us in a small capacity. Some of us will be leaders in businesses and churches, within government, and, and some of us will be leaders within our families and among our friends. But Jesus has called us all to be leaders. And it says this in Matthew 5, 14 to 16. It says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So wherever you are, be the leader God has called you to be. Whether it's at home, whether it's at school, whether it's in the future or present or now, whatever, God called us all to leadership. And the best way is this, is to be the light of Jesus to others. Be the light of Jesus to others. So, find and discover these traits because they will help you along the way. God loves you, he's got a plan for you. And actually trust the leadership position he's put you in. You can do it.